morning, my dear brothers and sisters. I greet you all in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We are made to rejoice in the Lord, no matter what our circumstances may be. Today, I would like to meditate with you in continuation of what we did yesterday. Um, what happened or the events that happened in the life and ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ on the first day of the Passion Week. And this is the second day. And the second day, we considered what happened on the first day. And um, today we shall consider what happened on the second day. There are four things happened on the second day, which is Tuesday. And um, I divided it into these four things that happened. And lesson on faith, which is chapter 11, verses 20 to 20, 33. And then a parable and then controversy generated by that parable, which is in chapter 12, verses 1 to 44. And then the, we have the Olivet Discourse, which is found in chapter 13, verses 1 to 39. And fourthly, the anointing of Jesus Christ by a woman at Bethany, which is found in chapter 14, verses 1 to 11. For our meditation today, I will refer to only two events. And the first of these is lesson on faith, Mark chapter 11, verses 20 to 33. And secondly, um, which shall be, we, which we will consider tomorrow, in the anointing at Bethany. Faith on lesson. You remember Jesus cursed the fig tree on the first day and the next day, which is Monday, as Jesus was returning to Jerusalem from Bethany, the disciples noticed that the tree was dried from its root and they pointed this fact to Jesus Christ. And then Jesus taught them a lesson on faith. In response to what happened, Jesus said, if you have faith, you may speak to this mountain. Mountain, you move from this place and be planted in the sea. It will happen. If you do not doubt, but believe what you said will happen, and then you will have it. Here is the lesson on faith. Jesus Christ always had a problem with his disciples uh, in finding good faith in them. There are three levels of faith. The first level is little faith, and then we have great faith, and then we have perfect faith. Now you should know in what level of faith you are in. Jesus always had a problem with disciples. Very often he addressed them as saying, O ye of little faith. Do you know where Jesus found great faith in his ministry? He always found a great faith among heathens who were not Jews. But whoever approached Jesus from a heathen or pagan society, community, Jesus found great faith in them and he commended about their faith. And he in fact said, you go according to your faith, it is happened. And they went home and found just like Jesus told them they would find. And now here Jesus is teaching a lesson about this great faith by saying, if you have uh, even little faith, you may speak to this mountain, you move from this place and be planted in the sea, it will happen. And therefore, 
believe when you pray that what you have received or asked for is received by you. If you do not doubt, you will have it. Now here is the lesson. The believing is done when you pray. You may not see the answer to prayer with these naked eyes immediately. But you need to learn to see with the eyes of faith first. What I have asked, I have received. That is a faith you must have. That is what Jesus is saying. When you pray, you believe that you have received whatever you have asked for. And then you will have it. Here is the truth. The believing is done when you pray. Not in reality. In reality, you may not see the answer. But if you continue to believe that you have asked and you have received and you give thanks to God, then Jesus said, you will have it. So first, learn and experience seeing the answer to your prayer by the eyes of faith. You know your, 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 your heart has eyes. And that is the eyes of faith. And in the same way, you reach out to God. How do you reach out? When you lift your hands to God in prayer and also in worship, you are reaching out. This physical hand, when it is raised, you must understand that these are the hands of faith rising along with this visible hand. So first learn to lift up your hands of faith. In the same way, use the eyes of faith, which is the eyes in your heart. That is the eyes of faith. And we all must experience God's miraculous when you do that. Now, one good example is David. When he went out to face Goliath, what gave him the boldness and the courage and the confidence that uh, God was going to give the life of Goliath in his hand. And with that faith, he went out. And when Goliath saw David, he was mocking at him. Goliath felt very insulted because David was just a puny little boy in his eyes. Here is a huge man standing there with experience. And he told David, you come here, your flesh will be feast for the birds of the sky and for the beast on the land. I want you to notice the answer or the response of David. David went and faced him and he said, it is not going to be my flesh, but it will be your flesh, which will be feast for the birds of the sky and the beast of the earth. How did David know that? Where did he get that confidence? He got this confidence by building up a very personal, intimate relationship with God Almighty while he was tending the sheep of his father on Judean Hill. He would sit under a tree or on a rock and he will sing of the praises and the greatness of God. He drew closer to God in a very intimate relationship and that relationship gave him an understanding of who his God truly is. And so when he went out to face Goliath, by the eyes of faith, he saw the stone leaving his sling and uh, being directed by God's hand and hitting Goliath where it is supposed to hit, the only part which was exposed, that was his forehead. And then he saw Goliath falling. And when he saw himself running towards Goliath and pulling out Goliath's own sword and chopping off his head and going to King Saul with the head. That's what David saw. That is seeing the result and victory by the eyes of faith. And that 
happen only when you know who your God is. By David, his relationship with God was such, he learned that his God was greater and mightier than a million Goliaths. And he learned the truth that no Goliath, no giant is bigger than his God. His God is a creator. He holds up the sea, waters of the seas in the hollow of his hand. He knew who his God was. So Goliath was not a problem for him. But God was everything to him. He saw by the eyes of faith. When you pray, you pray with the answer to your problem in view. Not the problem, but the solution you must see by the eyes of faith. And with that faith, with that sight, you begin to pray and believe God for the miraculous. May the Lord bless you as you meditate on this this morning. No matter what your circumstances or whom you are facing or what you are facing in life, we all are threatened these days. But through this word, God is saying to you, there is no need for you to be afraid if you know me. God says, I am with you always. When you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, he says, I am with you. God bless you and he give you the strength. Father, I thank you for your people who need you more than any other time today. They need you, Lord, your comforting, soothing presence and your touch upon their lives and then your anointing upon them and fullness of the Holy Spirit that the eyes of their heart may be opened up to see how great and how big and how wonderful and marvelous our God is. Let that revelation give them the strength to face this day. Thank you in Jesus' name. May the Lord bless you and make his face to shine upon you. Amen.